And here we go. We have lift off. Propulsion continues to be normal. Our CPA chamber pressure looks good. Following up. Welcome to another NSF live stream, and specifically, welcome back to Starbase. You are looking at Booster 11, sitting on the orbital launch mount, and as you can see, very clearly, the tank farm is beginning to go into full steam mode, or whatever you want to call it. The, the tank farm is going full steam, and shortly here... We hope to see a test of the booster of some sort. Uh, there has been no overpressure notice delivered today, but we have gotten some other signs that this might still be a static fire test. So, with that, the table is set. I'm Jack Byer. You can see my info pop up there in the top right. but. As usual, it's not just me, I'm joined by our ever-competent cohort of co-hosts, starting off with uh, Mr. Ryan Weber, right? Ryan, you're, you're on, right? I, I might be here, Jack. I don't, I don't know. Am I here? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, are you? I, I might be. But hi, hi, everyone. You know, hi. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us, Ryan. And our other commentator for today is... Trevor? Yes? Um, you know, I was thinking during your introduction, steam implies that it's water, right? And this isn't water vapor, so is it really uh. full steam ahead, or is it like full vapor ahead? It would need to be like nitrogen, you know, full full nitrogen ahead, but that doesn't have a good ring to it, so we'll, we'll need no, to workshop it. Yeah. <laughs> The tank farm's getting nitri. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> also, also in the background uh, operating today's stream is Kevin Michael Reed. You can see his info pop up right there as well, as well as Ryan's and Trevor should have popped up as well. So thank you, Kevin, for operating today's stream. You just did yourself again, the, the cloud reporter? Yeah, yeah, so I was gonna ask, hey, Kevin, what's our cloud report today? If Kevin he probably wasn't expecting he probably wasn't expecting to talk, so we got to give him a sec. Oh, he said he can't talk. Oh. Excuses. That's excuses. Right? Like, what are you, in the waiting room of a dental office or something? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you, in a golf tournament? <laughs> anyway, anyway, we're doing our standard thing here, where if you have any questions, type your question into chat, precede or postcede it with... Uh, at NASA Space Flight, and we'll see your question pop up in Perhaps. some love. Or in middle. Oh, we, have, but... we have clouds. We have clouds. We have a lot of clouds on the tank farm. Hey, I thought I heard somebody unmute. <laughs> hey, Kevin. That's it. Bye. Bye. Cool. So, yeah, ask your questions. We'll see them pop up in some software that we have running in the background. And with that, let's get right into it. Ryan, what do we think is happening today? Well, um, most likely it's a static fire. Uh, they removed all the scaffolding, they cleaned up the launch pad, the, the chopsticks are in the launch position to be as far away from the engines as possible. 
even the PA system said we're clearing the, the launch site for booster 11 static fire. The only thing we're missing still is a overpressure notice from Mary. We have not seen that yet. Um, it does not mean it, a static fire won't happen. It just means that either SpaceX is late or, I don't know, maybe they forgot. I know it is SpaceX, so who knows. Yeah, the whole overpressure notice thing is really weird because it used it seems like it used to be a hard requirement and now there have been multiple static fires of ships without one but every single booster static fire has still had one so we don't really know what the status of that is but hopefully we'll see all 33 of those engines light up today yeah kind of a conundrum there but we will see what happened either way i did hear that PA announcement while I was out at the pad. Of course, while you're at the pad, it sounds like, and bear with me on this, it sounds like So, you know, I'll take your word for it, Ryan, that they mentioned static fire, but with that, and with the tank farm spooling up, either way, it looks like we have a lovely evening of testing on our hands. So let's get right into it. Trevor, between a static fire of the booster and a wet dress rehearsal of the full stack, are these the two final tests for of the Flight 4 stack? Is there is there really just two tests left? I mean, they static fired the ship, the booster's already been cryoed. Yeah, What's left? so we don't know for sure, unfortunately. Um, SpaceX you never... Said, you said you knew for sure. Did you lie to me? You said you I, knew I, for sure. I always lie to you, Jack. The sooner you learn that, the better. Um, yeah, Dang, so harsh, harsh truths. <laughs> um, th those are the two tests that we expect uh, SpaceX to conduct. Just one full engine static fire booster, and then they'll likely roll back booster to the production site so they can continue doing some work on the OLM and do any retrofits onto booster and ship um, at the production site, and then roll those back both back out for flight. However, it's also possible that SpaceX will decide that they don't need to conduct a, um, a wet dress rehearsal. They may just want to go straight into launch attempts. Uh, I personally think that's unlikely, but at some point SpaceX is going to have to start removing that test as they, if they want to increase cadence. Um, and also, it can easily go the other direction. Maybe they'll find something in this test that they don't like, so they'll decide to do a spin prime test to boost it beforehand, or during a wet dress, maybe they'll run into problems and have to conduct, you know, a mini wet dress rehearsal uh, before a full wet dress like they did with the previous stack. So these still are very, very early vehicles in the grand scheme of things. And um, SpaceX probably doesn't have, you know, they don't know what's going to go wrong yet. And stuff will almost certainly go wrong at this point in the program. Yeah, that's fair. One question, though, why would they do retrofits? Like, they don't need to fix it in the past. They should do future fits. Hmm. That's a good point, Jack. I'm confused. I thought so. I guess Trevor didn't. You know, like, hmm. like retro, like old, or future, like, you know, but in the future. I suspect, like, the retro is probably, like, based on data, which is now retro. I don't oh, you're, know. you're taking me far too seriously. It's 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 a dumb joke. Yeah, I got the dumb joke, but now I'm actually curious. Where does the retro part of retrofit come from? Because it's already built, so they're going back and putting things on it that would normally have been put on while they were building it. But they learn things after they built it, so it's yeah. retrofits. But really, it's future fits, because yeah. they're you should you should make the booster better in the. Anyways, I apologize. Very little sleep over here. All right, so Ryan, where are we at in uh, in the flow here? We typically see a a set, I, I guess, smattering of things. I don't know what my brain is doing today. We see a set order of operations in terms of tank farm spooling up, orbital launch mount doing certain things, and then the booster beginning to get fueled with propellants. So where are we at in the flow? Well, um, so the the uh, OLM vent started around 3.10, so about 20 minutes ago. 
And usually that thing goes for about 45 minutes before a uh, prop load will start. So, you know, we're looking, looking at, you know, another what? My, my brain's not working today. Like another 15 minutes or so um, here. So get that out of 15, 20 minutes. Once that turns off, then we'll get into prop load for booster in which you'll see the lock subcoolers here and then the methane subcoolers which are on the other side of the vertical tanks uh, spool up a bunch and start venting even more and you'll see frost lines form on the booster. After that it's it's around like a 40 minute prop load give or take and then we'll probably have our event whether it's a spin prime or static fire I mean it'll be pretty obvious whether or not they're going for a static fire right away because if they load a decent amount of liquid oxygen and if we see a decent amount of methane loaded on board then we'll definitely know it's for a static fire so yeah i guess that's good to mention they load significantly more propellant on for a static fire than say a spin prime right yeah neat kevin conrad thank you for becoming a pad rat member no a red team member ken blackmore becoming a pad rat member Mr. One Wolf gifting five red team memberships. Thank you, Mr. One Wolf. Gosh, the subcoolers are so neat. Look at them go. Yeah, they are cool. Uh, a fun is thing that, to, uh, is that fourth it. one still not still not plumbed in, or that's the ship one? Ah, they, they have, nice. So, so each of those pipes is connected to two subcoolers. You currently have six running for booster, and then there's a, a pair that is kind of plumbed off that's mainly used for ship. And, well, there is no ship currently stacked, so they're not going to chill those down, obviously. Um, and the same goes for the methane side. Methane side, there's only going to be three uh, subcoolers that are getting um, chilled down. One of them will not, because that one is for ship. So... Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Jason Burgess, thanks for gifting five red team memberships. Y'all, we are completely viewer supported, so all the support is so, so, so appreciated. And I always have to say that if you can't support us monetarily, don't sweat it. That's what everyone else is doing, so you don't have to worry about it at all. And we appreciate you just the same. And if you hang out and chat, you may just get gifted a membership because of all these awesome folks gifting memberships like for example Chris P1341 gifting 20 red team memberships thank you so much Chris P I always want to say Chris P bacon you guys know that there's a pig there's the pig named Chris P bacon I see the word Chris P and I I, I think about the the bacon pig um, stop me if I'm talking insane Let's talk uh, I'll, I'll I'll stop. Do, do neither of you know about the bacon pig? Bacon pig. Yeah, crispy bacon on wheels. It's a little pig with like broken back legs, so it's got wheels. Its name's crispy bacon on wheels. Rings Anyways. a bell, but I don't remember. We'll go with that. <laughs> Is it like Mr. Potato except for bacon? I don't know, Mr. Potato. Explain. Maybe it's the wrong name, but I remember when I was oh, Mr. Potato Head. That's it. Um, it's like a, literally a potato that you can like add a mustache onto and like a hat and ears and legs and I don't know, it's something for children that I had when I was younger. It was. Trip. It was. Uh, I didn't think yeah. you were actually talking about a Mr. Potato Head, but thank you for describing Mr. Potato Head to me as if I'm an alien and I've never been on Earth and you I don't know you, what it is. You said that you was... don't know what it is. <laughs> I thought you were talking about a meme animal like Crispy Bacon on Wheels. I didn't think oh, you were talking man. about a children's toy. Well, that's where my mind went to. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Josh Zero, thank you for the support. They say Starhopper, strap to super heavy, wahaha, waffle. I don't get it. Um, Ryan, thank you for the support. They say looking forward to a nighttime static fire. Stop it. Stop it, Ryan. Hopefully we get it during the daylight. Although it might be, it might look cool at night. But so far, based on everything that we're seeing, uh, it's not going to be happening at night. Famous last words, right, Ryan? 
Uh, everything's tracking towards a static fire in mm, well, like 50 minutes or so. 50, 60, yeah. 50, 60 minutes. Wait. And, you know, that could change. There could be holds. This could end up not being a static fire. This could be an aborted static fire. We don't know. This is how it goes with Texas tank watching. We are watching the tank and waiting to see what happens next, but hopefully a uh, static fire within the hour. Musical Wolves, thank you for the support. They say full condensing ahead. I like that. That's a good one. That's better than full steam ahead. I like full condensing. Let's see, that's got a better ring to it than nitrogen. Joe says, was great to bump into Jack yesterday at Starbase. I was starstruck at Starbase. Don't, don't say starstruck about me, please. Uh, let's light this candle. But also, hey Joe, were you the guy with the awesome beard? It's pretty cool, you guys. I've met, I want to say, between 15 and 20 people in the last couple days. Um, because so many people, especially people from outside of the U.S., have come to Starbase in the last week in order to see the place as like a side mission for their eclipse plans. So shout oh, out to yeah. every single person that's come up to me or Sean in the last couple days because it's always awesome to to meet folks in the field and there was like a a dad mom with their kid uh, and the kid had like a little water rocket and he like took a picture of the water rocket next to the booster. Like, it was all kinds of cool stuff going on in the last couple days. People visiting Starbase. It, it almost felt like the same kind of vibes you would get before a launch. Like, a good amount of people coming out. So, thank you to everybody who came out and said hey, and I'm really glad that people are so excited that they're willing to leverage their Eclipse plans to also see Starbase. Pretty neat. Also, I'm not a, I'm not a star. Uh, don't Don't call me a star. Yes, you are. Uh, stop it. Asper, thank you for the support. They say, how long till they launch again? Didn't Elon just tweet launch next month, like last night? So sometime in May. Ryan, what do you think? Ryan, Trevor, what talking, do you think? Talking while <laughs> muted. Yeah, I love it. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm thinking mid-May, you know. I wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be surprised at that. Um, the the biggest thing is even once this is done, uh, you know, get add, add any mods that you need to the vehicles. So they're they're doing a lot of heat shield repairs on twenty nine. The biggest thing is waiting for that mishap investigation to finish off. Um, and whether or not they do a wet dress, I don't know if they do. It'll, they might not. There's there's that chance, you know. They might not do one. They may just send it. You know, I would love to know how much money it costs just to do a wet dress rehearsal in terms of the evac of the village, the, you know, compensation for law enforcement and the roadblock for things like, I don't know, nitrogen and oxygen and methane that do are not able to be recaptured because they do have the recondenser and the and everything they do try and recapture everything they can but still uh they're not able to capture every last drop so i i do wonder how much it just costs in time in time and money to to do a wet dress rehearsal versus just going straight into launch and treating your first launch attempt as a wet dress rehearsal at this point I mean, we're on flight four. I just like it seems like eventually that step will get deleted. But who I, knows? I mean, I guess I guess boosters are still or Falcon Nine boosters are still kind of tested in that way uh, at McGregor, right? Or do they do it? Do they even do a wet dress with boosters at McGregor, or is it just yeah. a static fire? So they do a wet dress and then a static fire, if I remember correctly. And then of course every second stage gets tested both the engine and it gets tested by itself and then the engine on the second stage so there's still a lot of testing done at that McGregor site and I mean for for these boosters basically the, the cryo testing they get at Massey's is basically the equivalent of the uh, of a wet dress at um, McGregor because I mean they don't use methane but they just use LN2 and liquid oxygen 
um, and they just basically cryo-proof the vehicle and then do a static fire test like a Falcon 9 and then they're basically ready to go. Uh, the only reason for the wet dress is to test the entire stacked rocket together and I don't know the last time they did a fully stacked wet dress with Falcon. It's probably been a while. Yeah, interesting. Either way, we'll have to see how it shakes out and when Flight 4 will happen, but I think sometime in May is a pretty dang good guess. I see a lot of people in chat saying May 4th. I get it. Star Wars. Perhaps. It seems a little early, but perhaps. Well, and, Ooh, and, and here you... Sorry. Go ahead. I mean, yeah, they do it every time they launch crew for NASA. That, that goes to show how much I remember about Falcon 9. Fair enough. Here you can see the super awesome view from the top of the Margaritaville South Padre. Thank you again to them for allowing us to place our camera on top of the hotel. And if you're headed to Starbase, definitely uh, consider staying at the Margaritaville South Padre because it is an excellent place to stay where you, with the right room, can see the pad from outside your window. So pretty nifty. Uh, Roden, thank you for becoming a Red Team member. Steve Cashwell, thank you for the super chat there. Very generous of you with the $20 super chat. Coco Cats, been seeing Coco Cats' name pop up like nonstop lately. What's up, Coco? Gifting a Red Team membership. I am Spaghetti, thank you for the super chat. I guess I've also now said on air that I am Spaghetti and the secret is out. I'm like, oh, geez, you guys, I'm I'm just a pile of pasta. Not the worst thing. I'm not feeling great had. today. I'm, I'm I, well, low bar uh, <laughs> or high bar. <laughs> Either way, I I am spaghetti. Says thoughts on new SpaceX video and anything new on V2 of Starship. Well, first off, Ooh. the video was awesome. I think we can all agree. It was cool. Not a lot of new footage. Just and the only real, the only real new piece of footage was the uh, um, hot stage from the Gridfin um, cameras. That's about it, though. So. Yep. And v version two of Starship. Uh I don't really have any thoughts other than yesterday. Sorry, it all starts to blur together when you have a very small amount of sleep. Yesterday they moved 29 out and what was it, 30 into the into Mega Bay 2, Ryan? Uh, yeah, 30. It's gone into Mega Bay 2 for engine install. Um, Arson says 30, 31. Uh, they they took 31. 31 was moved onto a stand inside High Bay. 30 was moved into Mega Bay 2, and 29 is still at the uh, heat shield um, working area, basically at high bay is what's become that, that area. Um, now, in terms of V2, there have been some uh, possible dev stuff we're seeing here and there. Um, maybe some changes to the payload section. It's kind of interesting. We're kind of still looking at it to see what there is, but... Uh, there's some possible changes coming, but we don't really know if they are for V2 or if it's just a prototype that they're, you know, messing around with yet. There's no confirmation at this, at this time. Yeah, so what I, where I was going with that is there is now space freed up inside of the high bay. And we have been seeing a few pieces of, I guess, development hardware or Pathfinder hardware um, if you're not if you are a member be sure to check out the member photos because both Mary and myself and Sean have been getting some shots of that dev hardware outside of the Star Factory so one of them or a couple of them were, were like pay, new payload bay sections that were clearly labeled as dev hardware so maybe some changes to the payload bay door or something going on there but all that said we're seeing dev hardware, we're seeing shuffling of ships in the high bay and outside of the high bay, so perhaps 
in the coming days and weeks with that room in the high bay freed up we will see some new and interesting shaped sections moving into it to be to begin the stacking of the net of the first v2 ship so keep your eyes on starbase live and on our our daily videos and on the member photos so that you stay up to date on what's going on with that well we've got water hopefully we see a version two ship here soon yeah we got waterfall OMB, oh, but we're close here um look we're getting, at we're getting, that getting close to prop load here um now, I, what I would say is I don't think they're going to use high bay for stacking V2. I think the high bay is done with stacking entirely. I think any V2 ship is going to be stacked in the new bay, Mega Bay 2, and they'll do it with the door closed, so less contamination, less everything, and that's how they're going to build V2. I don't think, I think 32 is the last ship that ever gets stacked in high bay. But yeah, we got a uh, Olam waterfall event going pretty strong here, and which is a really good sign coming up for prop load any minute now. Jack, are you talking while muted? I just said an entire paragraph while muted. I'm a smart human. Oh look, the OLM event, event stopped. The OLM stopped. There we go. We should be into prop load then. So... Excellent. So we'll keep our eyes open for Frost on the booster. Yep. Appearing hopefully momentarily. So Ryan, really quick, do you think the high bay is like destined to be demolished and replaced with another mega bay or... Uh, how, how, how do you think that's going to go? Yeah, I think uh, the launch control... I, I have a feeling the launch control center might get moved to the new office building they're going to make. It is closer to the launch site, but they are making that... They're making that office building pretty strong. Um, that's, that's all I'm going to say. Which is... Which kind of hints maybe they're making it so uh, they can put a launch control center up in there. Which means they don't need Stargate building anymore. Um, and then High Bay is all really High Bay is useful is just putting ships in to do some work on it. So why not demolish Stargate building and High Bay and build another Mega Bay? Why not? That's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, they could. When? They could do. Know. Although, isn't Launch Control at the Astra School right now? Like, I know they have some control facilities at Stargate for, like, testing and stuff. That would be, that'd be interesting if they moved it from the Astra School all the way to, uh, to the new office building. They, ha they do have a launch center in, in Stargate. We've seen, vis we've seen visuals of it, um, but there's also the control near the Astra School as well. Um, but we have I, I've seen stuff inside the Stargate building that, and not only that, they they were pretty close still to the launch. I mean, we saw uh, Dan Hewitt doing the interview from inside the Mega Bay. So, yeah. Good deal. Uh, Ethereal Swordsman, uh-oh, I already know. I read this name and I already know where it's going to go. Ethereal Swordsman is asking, are the rocket's feet going to walk or run today? I, Trevor, this is all you. I'm going to make you answer this. Yes, definitely one of them. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat and the insane brain, Swordsman. Flawed Perspective, what's up? Another name that pops up all the time. I love seeing all the regulars come out. Thank you for the super chat to say, how do you think SpaceX will handle a tanker test with only one orbital launch mount? Not long orbit time, been scratching yeah. my head. We have frost. I think most of the tank... There's Frost? Watch oh, tank. look, right there ab above the common dome. Yeah. Uh, and on the launch tank. In the after. Oh, I thought I saw some discoloration above the common dome as well. 
But yes, definitely down there at the bottom of the, the frost is rapidly forming, which is exactly what we expect to see at this point in the flow. Uh, how are they going to handle tanking tests with one mount, one launch mount? Well, a majority of tests, I think, early tests will involve a one ship moving propellant around itself. When it gets time to do a ship to ship propellant transfer, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they could turn the, this launch mount around fast enough to. Like, like, what is, Ryan, what is the extreme fastest, speaking of fast, look at this frost go. Yeah. What is the extreme fastest you think they could turn the orbital launch mount around? I think this is going to be, I think the fastest they're going to be able to turn this particular pad around is maybe a month, month and a half minimum, is what I'm thinking. I, I think they've realized that this design works for the prototype phase that Starship is in right now, but when they want to get to operational this current design doesn't work. And I mean, that's kind of showing the, the fact that they demolished all the lakes at 39A and who knows what they're gonna build in its place. Um, I, we don't know. It's, that's gonna be a fun thing to watch to see what SpaceX comes up with for a new pad design. Um, so I can't wait to see that. But I don't think this thing can, can handle a quick turnaround. Uh, so, for a ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer test, they need two mounts, is the TLDR. Pretty much, yeah. Or the ship needs to, like, stay on orbit for a month, which seems highly unlikely to me. I mean, it could. You're going to need to be able to keep propellant in for a little while, especially trying to go to Mars and stuff like that, or trying to go to the moon. True. Yeah, true. So, the true. real kicker is, is is do they design a ship do they design a ship with like extra insulation or something or, or find a way to keep the propellant um, liquid uh, for a long enough time that they can use this single mount to do a propellant transfer test between two ships? I don't know. So that's going to be something we have to watch for the next while. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I guess it would be a good boil-off kind of test if you kept the ship in orbit for a month. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see how that all pans out. Trevor, this one's for you. What'd you have for breakfast? I didn't have breakfast today. You animal. I never have breakfast. Everyone's like, breakfast is the most important meal, and I say no. Breakfast food is almost universally awful. Like, it is by far the worst food there is. And just like don't eat it and then have lunch. Lunch food is way better. I I have a variety of thoughts that I will choose to <laughs> save to express <laughs> to a later date, but suffice to say, common Trevor L. See, although I have to admit I'm normally not I'm not a breakfast person really as well. Although I do like breakfast foods. I mean, come on, wait. I just don't eat it at breakfast time. And, uh, yeah, the reason I bring that up... <laughs> chat's like, my ears! Sorry, chat. The reason I bring up breakfast is because I ate two delicious bacon breakfast tacos this morning, and Dan could did not because he's not here, so I just wanted to rub that in, in, in his face. Max Headroom, thanks for coming a pad rep member. Nuclear Fallout, becoming a flight engineer. Upgrading to flight engineer, in fact. Thank you, Nuclear Fallout. That is amazing of you. You get Discord access. You get all of the other sweet perks. You get the pre-show and post-show for NSF Live. And you get your name at the end of NSF Live as well. So thank you so much for that insane level of support. Space Kid, becoming a pad rep member, thank you. Shannon Stevens, becoming a launch director, thank you, Shannon. You also get Discord access. You also get the pre and post show for NSF Live. You also get all the members only photos and videos. You get everything. And you get your name 
at the NS at the end of NSF Live. Launch directors and flight engineers get their names at the end of NSF Live. So thank you, Shannon, for signing up at one of our higher levels of support. We appreciate you. We're completely viewer funded. Like uh, all of these robotic cameras, everybody's time, the servers, the bandwidth, everything. It's insane. So we could not do what we do without y'all. So thank you. Doug Ramsey, thank you for the support. They say, what are the chances Booster 11 completes IFT-4 mission with no need for investigation? Well, I guess we'll rule out anything with the ship um, because that would necessitate an investigation on its own. Mm, I'm going to say pretty low. Pretty, pretty low. Well, Trevor, what do you think? I honestly don't think it's impossible. Um, they got very close with the booster on the last flight, and I would imagine that the fix will be, you know, to some extent similar to whatever changes they made um, uh, w between flights two and three after booster couldn't even make it through the boost back then, right? If you looked at the entry velocity of booster it was like lower than falcon 9 is after its landing burn so it, i don't think heat is going to be an issue at all um then on ship right it seems very likely that given the uh angle of re-entry of starship that they made it through peak heating on that flight or at least were in to the regions of where um the, the most heat was being generated and that was all in the wrong orientation so to me it seems like if they're in the correct orientation they have a pretty decent shot at surviving re-entry on this next flight so maybe that's just me being very optimistic but I honestly think this next flight will go very well I, yeah. I would agree um, yeah. how well it remains to be seen Ryan go yeah. ahead the one thing that goes to show is that three flights in, every single flight, SpaceX has fixed the main problem that has caused the failure mode so far. They've they've fixed it each flight. Like, I mean, flight one to flight two, I mean, flight one, booster was kind of sad. Booster, oh, we got frost on the methane tank. Um, booster seven was kind of in a sad state on launch and through ascent. Booster 9, on the other hand, like, flawless up until uh, it tried to do its boost back burn. And then, of course, and then you get to Booster 10, and Booster 10 performs a boost back burn and gets through Glide, then has issues there and can't relight. But I wouldn't be surprised if Booster 11, uh, they regain the control and they, they're they able to perform a landing burn and a, a soft splashdown. If that's the case, then... They don't need a mishap investigation on the booster. If it gets to a soft splashdown without a rud, then they perform their objective, which would be incredibly impressive only four flights in. Um, we should also there. add, though, that to some extent, the whole FAA side of it is just the formality. Mm -hmm. Even if the FAA does not have an, um, does not require an accident investigation, SpaceX is going to perform one over any anomaly that happened on that flight, even if it didn't lead to a loss of the vehicle. That's just because SpaceX constantly wants to make their vehicles more reliable, more successful, and get higher performance out of them. So, you know, they're doing this on Falcon 9, and we haven't had a Falcon 9 failure, knock on wood, in, what, 2017, I think was the last one, with AMO 6? Is that 16? 2016, yeah. yeah. I think it was 2015, 2016. I could just pull up my spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, you have your spreadsheet. <laughs> but, like, it's... They continue to want to work on this, and that's... It's kind of like why SpaceX has... Um, why SpaceX and the FAA made it a requirement for these vehicles to have a soft splashdown is because... Not only is this supposed to be a fully reusable vehicle, so they need to be able to get to a soft splashdown in order to eventually get to recover them, it's also because it kind of pushes SpaceX to get to that point, to not have an investigation anymore and launch faster, get better. 
and it's just kind of a collaboration and they want to make sure this the vehicle works the way it's supposed to so and it's just to say is spacex is the one that runs those investigations the faa opens it spacex runs it alongside the faa and ha- gives them the information as they receive it and everything like that it's that's that's basically what how, how that works so nice so we're seeing frost continue to rise on both tanks of the booster now and alex is reporting on our back channel that all that remains is c- to continue filling the booster and we should keep our eyes open for the orbital launch mount vent coming back on around 4 25 central time so in about 25 minutes ish based on previous timelines for this sort of test we should see the olm vent come back on and then hopefully a static fire sometime around 4 30. ryan what uh what is the amount of prop load telling us right now are, are we able to rule out spin prime based on that or are we still in the in the uh uncertain zone for a little bit uh we're pretty much in the zone of a static fire with the amount of the amount of methane they're loading into this and they're continually loading liquid oxygen so yeah we're we're definitely looking at a a static fire here based off the amount of prop load i I can say that with pretty good certainty here yep so again no overpressure notice was delivered to mary today that we're aware of so that is a bit anomalous However, we will see what happens as the clock continues to tick down to our expected T0 based on uh, spreadsheets. <laughs> based on Alex's spreadsheets. Getting a whole lot of support, so I want to make sure we thank everybody. DA Swanson, thanks for gifting a Red Team membership. Shannon Stevens, also gifting five Red Team memberships in addition to becoming a launch director. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, Eternal Wolf gifting a Red Team membership. Thank you for that. Isaac Rodman, thank you for the support. They say, looking forward to seeing this thing eventually get to know the ocean in a gentle way. (laughs) It's going to learn to swim. Bill LeBlanc, thank you for the support. Uh, They say, our current lower level member is eligible for higher level gifted membership. I don't think that's how the gifting works. I think you... I think the person gifting chooses what level they're gifting at. I'm not sure. That's a good question. I think you can only gift red team. I think you can gift pad rat too. Maybe not. Maybe you can only gift red team. Uh, Mark, think, thank you for the yeah, $5 like tip. Just buy red teams. Okay, excellent. Thanks for the $5 tip, Mark, to tips.nasaspaceflight.com. They say, today I'm watching SBL slash NSF for one year, and I just wanted to say thanks for the amazing content you've been providing this past year. NSF is 100% the best rocket-related channel there is. That's very sweet of you, Mark. Thank you for the support. We appreciate the kind words, and you better believe we will plow all of the support from everybody coming in today back into the field of rocket coverage. That metaphor ran out of steam. But you know what didn't run out of steam? Or I guess condensation. The tank farm. You know, one thing you can... 42... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, one no, thing ahead. you can see, um, if we zoom in on the, the methane tank again, um, especially with this lighting, you can see all the... You can see the new stringers that have been added for Booster 11. It's one of the changes between Booster 10 and Booster 11. Um, a little bit more structural support in the methane tank. You can see all those weld marks for those strainers. A decent amount more on that. It's, uh, it's a, they're just making these vehicles even stronger and stronger. And it's kind of hilarious considering how strong Booster 7 was as that stack was flipping. Um, and they're still making it stronger. So it's. Hey, go around with more stringers. More stringers, more better. EHUD42, thank you for the support. It's a milestone dashboard on the live streams. Please and thanks. I assume they meet testing milestone. That'd be a good idea. It's only Tony. Thank you for the support. They say full stack just for the photo op with the eclipse. I doubt it. 
But that would be cool. Hangman Media, thanks for becoming a Padrat member. Ninja Decimator, pew, pew, pew. Thank you for gifting five red team memberships. Black Hawk New Zealand, five red team memberships gifted as well. Thank you. Apocalypse Cow, also gifting five red team memberships. And Ironclad, gifting five red team memberships. Y'all are amazing. If you got a gifted membership, be sure to thank the person that gifted it to you. It's very kind of them. John Depker, thanks for the support. Speaking of being kind, thanks, John. They say, here's to Jack's Pasta Fund. <laughs> Let's go B-11. <laughs> Let's go B-11 Static Fire. Oh, God, what a name. Jim Cavett, thanks for gifting a Red Team membership. John Depker, gifting a Red Team membership. Mike Robinson, becoming a Red Team member. This is, I'm like struggling to keep up with all the support. Anonymous, with a store purchase, they say, do we know when the ship Static Fire Pad at Massey will go online? And could we possibly see a booster static fire pad at Massey? I suspect no on the booster static fire pad, just because it requires essentially an OLM, and if you're going to build an OLM, then you might as well build an OLM and not a static fire stand. I don't know. I mean, I guess they could make a simplified one, but so far we have seen no indications that a booster stand will go at Massey's. Just ship. As for when it will come online, that is anyone's guess. Trevor, you're anyone. Guess. Mm, I really have no idea. Probably. I mean, ship stands seem relatively simple in the grand scheme of things, especially compared to, you know, the OLM. So I wouldn't be too surprised if we see testing on it this year, but beyond that, I, I don't have a very good guess. No, I mean, that's, I think that's a fair enough assessment given the data that we have. Uh, Josh Zero, thank you for the super chat. They say strap Jack to a frosty booster makes Jack Frost. Huh. And Plutonium239, they say thank you, or thank you for the support. They say no offense, but booster 11. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to read that. <laughs> but thank you, Plutonium239. Uh, <laughs> moving right along, SP Rupert, thank you for the super chat. They say, if the movie Space Camp was remade today with Starship, where would the White Sands alternative landing tower be? I mean, it would definitely be KSC. That would be the alternative landing tower. Never, you've never seen Space Camp, have you? I have no idea what this question is, no. Brian, are you still here or are you gone? I, I, I'm here. Um, I, I, have not, I, have, I have not seen Space Camp. I How early, have you not seen Space Camp? I, I've seen a lot of stuff. I have not seen that. Maybe, uh, I don't know. Uh, at, le at, least I'm, at least I know what Star Trek, Stargate, and Star Wars is. So... That's I'll fair. Go with that. Well, yeah, it's a it's a really cheesy '80s movie. It's a classic. Uh, they, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it involves the space shuttle and it involves space camp. So there you go. Watch it. Um, holy cow! Bideford with a hundred dollars super chat. Bideford, thank you so much. Now and always, they say thank you, Jack, for hanging around Boca Chica. Enjoy the banter between Jack and Trevor. Bacon good. Go booster eleven static fire. Indeed. I'm glad somebody likes our banter, Trevor. I see a lot of people in chat generally angry at me for, <laughs> for how, I, how I'm mean to you, but you know what? We're, it's, we're friends. We're friends. That's what we do. We are best friends who just strongly disagree with one another on everything, especially 24 frames um, per second. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Again with the 24 frames per second thing. What did what, what did you think of uh, of Nighthawks? Like my my critique of Nighthawks the other day. Nighthawks. The the fo the painting of the people in the, oh. the Edward Hopper painting. Um. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was interesting. It certainly is a good painting, but I I still just like don't know. I still don't understand what makes a painting great. Like, why do people? love some paintings or even better like when we were talking the other day about some of jackson pollock's art and you're like i kind of like it and to me it looks like 
spilled condiments. You know, why? what draws people to that? <laughs> it's beyond me. I call this one messy hamburger. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, that's that's art though, right? Like, it, it it is it is in the eye of the beholder and some art speaks to some people and i think that's part of the magic and if it doesn't if it doesn't reach out and grab you by the eyeballs and say you know you love this and your brain isn't flooding you with all the good chemicals then you know what that's that's fine i'm, I'm sure some art does like dare i say taylor swift music <laughs> but uh you know different strokes for different folks mm -hmm. yeah i've never gotten super into like visual art it's never nothing has ever been i've never been super drawn to anything which is why i was so curious like why do you and hagen think so highly of this painting which you know is i think the whole point of it is that it's depicting something that's fairly common fairly Ooh. relatable well that's a wow all right uh, well, the, uh, what is that vent there on the bottom? That is uh, that is the engine chill vent. I, that's a pretty strong engine chill vent right there. That's because that, that's right where the locks pond is. At least it should be. Interesting. Kevin, can we get CP eleven? Next camera view. I'm yeah. transfixed by the venting. Uh huh. I'm trying to figure out where the, exactly this is. Oh, here, give me, give me a second here. Oh. Um. Hmm. That's interesting. We, I call this segment of the pot of the show. Ryan figures things out. Ryan, what have <laughs> what have you figured out? That does look like the lock spawn. That should be engine chill. Yeah. Yeah, that's engine chill. Yeah. So, nice. That's a little bit stronger. Another than step normal. in the flow Maybe. towards. That's that is stronger Wait, than Maybe normal. they did some upgrades after after the last flight. Maybe they've done. I have seen some workers while I've been out and about over by the locks pond. I couldn't quite tell what they were doing, but perhaps they've uh, they've made some changes to that part of the GSE. Well, here's the also, other Moldy, thing. Also, I'll... Moldy Space is in chat. Hi, Moldy Space. We love you. Go ahead, Ryan. Hi, Moldy. The other thing I'll say too is, and this is just this is speculation. Uh, we know that the engine numbers on ship twenty nine were in the three hundreds. Now we don't know what's on booster eleven, but they could be in that range. Um, we we don't really know what that means in terms of Raptors. So maybe something has changed slightly. Maybe something's a little bit different with that. I don't know. Um, that's just kind of speculating there, because those those engines could be like in the the 300 range, but we just we just haven't seen the serial numbers because they had the uh, the Raptor booties with a W as Crispy likes to call it, um, the Burgenator. So we don't we don't really know, and you can see there the the line that goes around the OLM. That's that's the uh, uh, that's the engine chill line. So you can see that where it goes down and then to the locks pond there so it's kind of interesting here um it's something to, to watch out for because it does seem a little bit stronger than it has in the past hmm. talking well muted again jack thank you <laughs> russell snodgrass thank you for the support hundred dollar super chat you're amazing always with the high dollar super chats from russell so thank you russell they say pretty impressive that they got the olm reconditioned and turned around for testing this quickly any idea if they've made improvements you know it's so hard to say based on what we can see from the outside it certainly seems like the majority of the work has been refurbishment versus improvement but again it's hard to say from from just being on the outside looking in this is very impressive though on last night starlink alex and i were talking about you know what other rockets have a pad that can be reused within three weeks of a launch let alone what other rockets this large can do that i guess not three weeks like six weeks or whatever or 
I guess it is like three or four weeks. It's wow. been 22 days since Booster 10 left this pad for Flight 3. Yeah, so, you know, I think we're all used to hearing Falcon's pads being turned around in four days or whatever, which is just mind-blowing. But if you ignore Falcon, Starship is already starting to approach some impressive records. <laughs> Yeah, Wesley the third in chat saying that's seriously bonkies. I would agree. I would say it's even it's kabonk bonk even. Mm. It reaches it reaches that level. Thank you, Russell, for that extremely generous amount of support. Let's do a few questions as we wait for the clock to tick closer to four thirty. When we hope something will happen. Yes, Ilhudo Games, kabonk bonk. It's the next level of insanity above bonkies. Edward Brown is asking, are there going to be any unique tasks Test 4 aims to complete, or will it be the same as Test 3? Well, we know they're not going to carry Starlinks on Flight 4. So... I expect to see basically the same profile as Flight 3. Trevor, what do you expect? Yeah, so Gwen Shotwell mentioned that it's basically going to just be a repeat of the last flight. Um, and then Elon added on X saying that the main goal for this mission is to survive, uh, is for ship to get through peak heating section of reentry, which presumably, if it gets through peak heating section of reentry, then it'll make it all the way down. Um, so hopefully that's what we'll see, but aside from that, it'll be basically identical to this previous flight, hopefully having attitude control, hopefully the propellant test goes a little bit better, and hopefully, you know, it kind of seemed like the payload bay door also had some problems, but I can't imagine that'll be something that's hard for them to fix. Ryan, any additional thoughts? Yeah, um, yeah, the, the payload door, it, it, did, it did seem like um, they may have had some issues. I mean, they, we didn't have uh, an exact, we didn't have, like, video the entire time, but it did seem like it did some flexing that it probably wasn't supposed to do, um, and it didn't kind of, didn't really fully, cl it didn't look like it fully closed prior to reentry. So that's something they'll have to look at and fix, and they might be even fixing that right now on ship twenty nine. For all we know, um, uh, we have to see. We have to see if they go up to the uh, payload bay hatch and go inside and do stuff in there. Uh, that'll be a pretty good indication on that one. Um, and then in terms of, uh, they just kind of have to get roll control down. It, it did look like they were having. I, I don't know if they couldn't activate the, like their roll thrusters or whatever what the issue was, but. If they can get the attitude control under and everything, um, get that in space burn in, which uh, which they want to do along with and staying along the same flight path, then yeah, they should be able to complete the same tests and maybe even hopefully re-enter if they're in the right orientation. Fingers crossed. And Ann Copeland is asking, do you think there will be a long time between the last version 1 ship and the first version 2 ship? Basically, can they build the version 2s fast enough? I think part of that comes down to how, how many of the version 1s do they end up flying? I mean, we're, we're waiting on ship 29 and booster 11 to fly. Beyond that, they have ships 30, 31, and 32, right, Ryan? Uh, yeah, they have those three. But one thing they can do is, as they showed this with ship with uh, version one, is they can stack a ship in about 30 days. But then there's like two months worth of prep where they have to install the press lines, the entire raceway, they have to hook up all the internals, and then base and then finish the heat shield off, and then it's usually ready for cryo. After that, it's another couple months with engine install and static fire preps, and then even more time for flight. So I think um, depending on if they can start stacking a version two by the summer and they fly all the way up to ship 32, there shouldn't be that much of a gap between version one and version two flying, I think would be the case, but they kind of need to start stacking by at least the summer. 
in order to get that going. I, I mean, also, version 2 could have a shorter test campaign, and it might even be easier to put together. There's also that. We just don't really know. Right. So, we are about 10 minutes out from our notional T0 for Static Fire. Again, no overpressure notice was delivered today, but that is not the end of the world. We have seen static fires before on days overpressures have not been de delivered, so it's still on the table. And Alex is saying in our back channel that he compared the start of engine chill on booster 10 static fire with the start of it on this test, and everything looks on track for a 4.30 p.m. test, which would be just about nine minutes from now. Whatever kind of test it ends up being, spin prime or otherwise, or static fire, maybe, hopefully, please. I mean... Pretty please. I don't know why they would do a spin prime with this this propellant load. It's the only thing I can think of is a static fire with this amount of propellant inside. I just hope, I hope that they're able to pull it off, whatever it is they're trying to do, and they do not need the Monday or Tuesday closure because, um, yeah, Eclipse. So... <laughs> Fingers crossed there's no conflict there. It would uh Deborah Hall our commentary. Oh my god. Deborah Hall, sense. thank you. You know, it made sense. It was good. It was good. Sawyer would be proud. You you get a pun token for that one. Yay. Um Deborah Hall, thank you for the support. They say bacon, bacon, bacon. Telstar 86, thanks for gifting a red team membership. Daniel B, whoever that is, probably some jerk, uh, says, just wait, Jack, just wait. Well, you know what, Dan? I ate two delicious breakfast tacos this morning with extra bacon, and you didn't. Because you're not here. Uh, so I guess you should come back soon and help fix things. Josh, thank you for the support. They say, thoughts on the IFT3 video SpaceX put out yesterday. We talked about that a little while ago. It's really neat. Not a whole lot of new footage, but... Pretty darn neat. Um, oh. Donald Morrison, thanks for becoming a Capcom member. Music Duck, thank you for gifting 10 Red Team memberships. And Anders Carlson, becoming a launch director. Thank you so much for that, Anders. Roger grabbing some stuff from the store. They say, I love all your broadcasts of the Rockets. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Roger. And thanks for grabbing some stuff from the store. Ooh, they got a metal print. Always have to mention that when you get a metal print, a uh, portion of the sale goes directly to the photographer who took the image. And with all the gear and lenses and travel expenses and everything that it takes to, to cover these launches and cover these events, just know that when you get a metal print, not only is the photographer grateful that you like their work enough to put it on their wall, but also they're grateful for the direct support. Jerlock, thank you for the support. They say, have all the lifts been moved out of your way today? It certainly appears so. Super Steph, thank you for the support. They say, save Jack from Daniel Fund. <laughs> not to interrupt Ooh, you, Jack, and Mary but, yep. There you had it. <laughs> Mary is reporting in our back channel that she thinks she heard a siren, but she's further away from the checkpoint. So that could very well have been the old 10-minute siren there. And we could be just about um, four-ish minutes away from whatever test is about to happen. Probably a static fire? Question mark? But yeah, if you're just tuning in, thank you for choosing us for your Starship or any rocket coverage. We appreciate our viewers. You don't have to support us monetarily. We do like to thank the people that do. But you know what? If you can't, don't worry about it, because that is the glory of crowdfunding. So hopefully just a few minutes away from a milestone test of Booster 11 here. What we do we should, think uh... will happen if this test goes exactly right and uh, and everything is, is good to go. I mean, do you think they'll roll Booster 11 back? Yeah, I think Booster 11 gets rolled back for final any final preps that need to be done, and they'll do the rest of uh, the work on the OLM 
They still have to repaint the legs. I guess they decided not to do it for the static fire because, well, it's going to get burned anyway. What would be the point? Um, so they still have to do that. Uh, and there's probably still more refurbishment because one thing they've shown is they basically get the old M ready for a static, do the static, and then they'll pull the, pull the booster off and get it ready for launch. Um, is kind of where they're where they've been at with this this launch pad. So uh, they'll probably pull it off, send it back, probably as early as in early, early next week, if this test goes well. And yeah, so our, our next thing we're looking for here is that OLM vent to start back up, indicating the finishing of prop load here. Should happen any moment now. Yeah, we're right around the predicted time from Alex of that OLM vent starting back up. So we'll keep our eyes healed for that to happen here feel free to interrupt me if it does start back up in the meantime helen last becoming a pad rep member thank you helen steve ailing becoming a launch director thank you so much steve uh bays anthony guitars becoming a pad rep member thank you steve kalavik thank you so much for the support they say if the arguing between trevor and jack if you ever need someone to moderate your arguments i'm available but i'm biased 24 frames per second is good and breakfast tastes great yes you can moderate I say no. It'll just be, <laughs> it'll just be both of... Overruled. <laughs> it'll just be both of us yelling at Trevor. Um, which is not... Uh, that's basically the dynamic always. Um, yeah, that's true. Can't confirm. Jay Mersh, thank you for the support. They say don't stop Booster 11. Or don't stop... Be 11 in. Like, like don't stop believing. I, yeah. Nice. Um, ben A... Thank you for the support. They say Flame Trench at 39A makes sense. Won't need to upgrade the integrated launch tower for version 3 ships. Yeah, that makes sense. And Francis, thank you for the support. They say, hi from Italy. What do you think about why they have removed heat tiles from the top of Ship 29? That is really interesting. Ship 29 has had a lot of heat tiles removed, including a bunch of tiles from the very tip of its nose cone. So, uh, yeah, what do we think is going on there, Ryan? So, from all the spots that they're pulling the heat, tail, heat shield tiles from are where they use adhesive rather than pins, um, which kind of goes to show that uh, SpaceX wants to redo... Oh, there's the OLM vent back on, which means we got... Prop load is finished. Um, I'll quickly finish this question. Um, so, basically... They want to redo the way they do the adhesive, so they want to take it off, clean it. One thing we saw them do is rough up the nose cone a little bit so that the adhesive sticks a little bit better. Um, so that's kind of what they've been doing. Because uh, as we saw, they they were at re-entry with Ship 28, so they want to get... They want to give this ship the best possible chance of making it through re-entry if they, if they get there again. So that's why they're going through and testing all these tiles and replacing them and making them better. So that's basically what they're doing. Nice. All right, we're getting really close here. There will be a uh, interesting vent from the booster at around T minus 40 seconds, I believe Alex is saying in our back channel. So we're listening out for that. Of course, the water deluge will activate at like T minus, oh, he's saying it's from the side of the orbital launch mount. Thank you, Alex. The water deluge will activate and we'll all hush up so that we can hear the uh, the static fire of the booster. So hopefully just moments away here as the clock ticks past 429 local time. We have a booster with a healthy prop load and we have that report from Mary that she thinks she heard a siren. So fingers crossed we get a static fire of the booster here momentarily. Oh, DSS is starting up. Yep, that is the detonation suppression system mm -hmm. that we saw installed after the booster 7, uh, shall we call it, oopsie-daisy? Yeah. Although, uh, that, was, that was interesting. It, it looked like it started and then stopped. But maybe they were just priming it and getting it ready to go. Might have, primed, might have been just priming it. Of course, there could also be... Oh, yep, there it looks like it's starting up again. Oh, that's the OLM or, vent. That's the OLM vent? Okay. Interesting. 
All eyes are on Booster 11 at this point. Hopefully just moments away from a static fire. I I'm looking this at the is, deluge There plate. we go, yeah. There we go. This behavior we've seen. All right, let's listen in. Excellent. I would definitely call that a static fire <laughs> test of booster 11. Yeah, you can see the water deluge cool. still going. You can see the clouds making some cool shadows on the booster. Oh, how beautiful is that? Trevor, go it's, ahead. It seemed, what, like six, seven seconds, which is about the full duration that we've seen before. Thank you. That was my first question, is what was the duration <laughs> like on that? Look at all the debris. <laughs> Uh, well, let's 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 see here. Let's wait for the replays to really see how many seconds it was. But yeah, it seemed like a couple of seconds because if I remember correctly, the um, um, what was it? The booster ten scene was about like not almost like nine ten seconds. It was pretty long. So we'll see how long this one really was. But it seemed like like, like six or seven. Excellent. Another test in the books for the Starship program. Let's. Uh, stand by for those replays coming in so that we can uh, examine exactly what it was that we saw. But that certainly looked like a full-on static fire of all engines on the booster there. Yay! More data for SpaceX. That was a fantastic-looking test. Trevor, what's your take? before we watch the replays and while we watch this massive dust cloud float away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, looks good to me. Obviously, we don't have much indication so far, but no immediate depressing is always a good sign. Um, certainly seem to be in the full duration time frame. Again, we don't know exactly what duration they were targeting, but this is standard from previous tests that we've seen. So um, let's just hope we get some official confirmation from either Elon or SpaceX on X, um, that this test was successful, or if they have to repeat another one, or whatever the case is. Right. Yeah, they've been really good about uh, tweeting out updates and whatnot lately, so hopefully we, uh, we get to find out a little bit more about what happened with today's test here shortly, and maybe like some cool drone video or something from SpaceX, that'd be nice. We'll keep our eyes open on the socials for that. Can we take a moment really quick while we wait for those sick replays to come in so that we can pour over them frame by frame? Can we take a moment to just express that Alex has become scarily good <laughs> at predicting T-Zeros? <laughs> well, I, it's, it's also, yeah, Alex has done a pretty good job at, uh, I think, I think it's like the NSF team as a whole too. We've all, it, We've seen so many tests, especially Alex, uh, and like we were able to nail down these times so well. Like it, it's just, uh, it's so it's so fun to watch us like just nail it down almost to the minute. It, it's so much fun to watch that. Yeah, I love that we're at a point where that's the case. Uh, it, I've, it feels like just yesterday that all of this was so new compared to tests on the suborbital side that we we did not have this level of predictability. But thankfully, now as we approach Flight 4, enough data has been gathered by Alex and the NSF team as a whole that we're able to predict these things pretty well, which is, uh, you, you know, you love to see it. Yeah, I mean, Alex is, Alex is crazy. <laughs> he does so much amazing work for us and doesn't, he doesn't want the credit for it, but he deserves so much credit for all of it. That's so true. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, like, Ryan, you write SBU, Adrian and Alex write SBU, like, Alex is just a wizard with numbers and tracking every little detail 
so is Adrian, so are you. It's like everybody on the team that contributes to the knowledge base, it, it really makes a huge difference. So props. That was a great test. I'm still just kind of shocked that that appeared to go extremely smoothly and extremely routine. Gone appear to be the days of many holds and starts and stops and a many day long attempt for a single test. Hey, hey Jack, there's another thing that Alex writes too. You know what that is? Oh yeah, it's This Week in Space Flight, which a new episode came out today and you should definitely check out the new episode of, uh, of Twist that came out this morning. I believe Alicia wore solar glasses and I believe there are some hijinks so if hijinks are your thing, as well as space news, and, you know, just good, solid information, be sure to check out Twists, which came out a little while ago today. So, you know it has the freshest, most piping hot information. Let's see... You know, I'm not seeing a full-on depress yet, so there's still a... Although, one thing they have done recently with, with detanking is they'll de they'll uh, mostly detank the vehicle before doing a, f a full depress, like full, full depress. They do like a partial one, and then like once the tanks are nearly empty, then they just dump the rest of it later. Um, so, right, right now we're into, we're most likely into detank mode um, as uh, as they, as because they usually start that right after they do the initial depress to take it down from flight pressures, basically. So, now. Legs looking a little bit more scorchy, to, as expected. Mm -hmm. And yes, scorchy is a technical term. I like it. Oh, I, it looks like... It looks like the Burgenator is spamming the link to This Week in Space Flight in chat, so bring that up in another tab and give it a watch when you have a chance today. We would appreciate it. A lot of work goes into the videos we put out. They're like your children, and you want to see them do well, and they're good. I mean, so watch it. Do it. You know what would be cool to see, although I don't, I don't remember, I don't really know what it would require for the the water dealer system to do this but it'd be really cool after they do a static fire like 10 minutes later they relight like just the center 13 you know like that would be awesome burn. yeah that would I, be pretty cool but I, I don't think it'll ever happen but it'd be cool <laughs> it would be cool i mean they have a couple uh a couple uh water deluges in the in the tanks like they they don't have just one right if i remember correctly the uh, with the tanks full they can do it like three times i'd have to read because i think it was in that uh fish and wildlife uh report i think they're all i think they only use like a third of it for a single fire which is kind of ridiculous considering how much um water is you know used in that um but I think it's at least three, maybe only two. I'd have to read that uh, Fish and Wildlife document again. Neat. Just uh, taking a look at the infrastructure here. Blast wall looks like it lived. Tank farm looks fine. Hopper peeking around the corner there, being cute. Hi, Hopper. Again, we have replays coming down the pipe, so stand by for that. And we will be able to go through and look at these different angles and different views and uh, sort of extrapolate from that what exactly it was that we just saw. So stand by. We're working on getting those replays up as fast as we can. Toning, thanks for the support. They say if Static Fire is successful today, it certainly appeared to be, do you think they immediately roll Booster 11 back to the Mega Bay, 
or do they bring the hot stage ring to booster 11 instead of a rollback? I think they roll back, almost certainly. Um, the mishap investigation, as we were talking about earlier, is still not closed out, and so there is a um, there is probably work left to be done retrofitting or future fitting or whatever you want to call it the booster and ship with whatever they learn from uh, from the mishap investigation. So I think it's safe to say after this or whatever other testing SpaceX may have planned for the booster, it will roll back to the production site. Steve, thank you for the support. They say trivia time. What space camp actor in another movie went back in time? Name the movie, name the actor. I am so lost. I'm not good at actors. I apologize, Steve. I'm an uncultured swine. Maybe the question was for me. Oh, okay. Uh, no. <laughs> try. Sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Kimberly, oh, thank you for the store purchases. They say, you guys keep me sane. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for liking what we do so much that you chose to support us and grab some merch. They got the Moon and Mars shirt. What else did they get? Hello, software. I said, <laughs> what else did they get? <laughs> All right, well, either way, thank you, Kimberly, so much. Ooh, they got a mug as well. The Texas Tank Watchers mug. That's a classic. I thank you, Kimberly. It's yeah. Nice. I like it. That's one of my favorite designs that we've done. Uh, Josh Zero, thank you for the support. They say, did you see the new video SpaceX posted on SpaceX YouTube? Yes, we were talking about that a little bit earlier. David, thank you for the store purchase. They say, love the coverage and commentary, each live stream, and the awesome photography. Thank you, David. We appreciate it. Uh, knock it off. Thank you for the support. They say, is there a map, or does anyone know the locations of all cameras installed on the booster or the Starship? I haven't seen one, but that would be really like an interesting infographic. There, there are ones you can see um, that are installed on the vehicles. A lot of them, though, I mean, there's obviously internal ones that we don't know about. Um, see, I know SpaceX added more cams after Flight 1. Uh, and a lot of those are feeds that we don't have access to or can't see or, you know, stuff like that. But we do know of one around the flaps, uh, what, one's off the flaps on the ship. Um, you can see you can see cams um, just below the, uh, just uh, not just below, but it's just around the, the grid fins on Booster. It's kind of where we got the shot on the recap video of the hot staging from the Booster point of view, which was really cool. But... There isn't a whole map, but we know of some. Yo, Raider, again, thank you for the support. They say, Jack, you should grow your beard long again like mine. So it was you. Nice. Uh, I am going to grow my beard back, but probably not as we come into the hot Texas summer. Um, it's, I feel like beards are more of like a winter thing. You know, when it gets hot, it gets itchy. It's no fun, but... Anyways, no one wants, no one cares about beards. Everyone cares about Booster 11. And again, we do have replays coming down the pipe, so stand by, and we will watch those replays. Matt PD, thank you for the support. They say, I'm in Florida right now, and I forgot how good bacon jerky is. I've never had good bacon jerky. I should probably try and make some. Mm. The only bacon jerky I've ever had, I've been like, mm, yeah, not for me, for whatever reason. Duke Nukem. Trevor, you don't know what Duke Nukem is, do you? Nope, I have no idea. Oh, no. Yeah. It's a microwave brand. It's a microwave brand. I, why would I know what a microwave... What? It's not. It's a video game. <laughs> 12 was... minus 30 has to fly. It's the right sum. Okay. You got me there, Jack. I just gonna say that the trying to trying to spoof Trevor there, you got me. With that <laughs> well, he one. believed it. That's the best part. <laughs> that is the best part. <laughs> he, he believed it. <laughs> that is. Oh, I had no idea what it was, but I was like, I thought that was a weird name for a microwave brand. But I'm also like, why the heck does Jack think I just randomly know some microwave brand? <laughs> 
<laughs> that was, oh, that was a good one. That's what you get for trying to explain Mr. Potato Head to people like they don't know what it is. <laughs> you said you didn't know what it was. I thought you were talking about a meme animal. How many times do I have to say that? But it's Mr. Potato Head. You didn't say for you said Potato Head, and I was like, is there a cute cat on the internet that I should know about named Potato Head? And then you said Mr. Potato Head, and I knew what you were talking about. You're just be in chat, Mr. Potato Head is my role model. <laughs> <laughs> Max a million, uh, thank you for the support. They say sausage, egg, and cheese on a Kaiser roll. Yes. Uh, Josh Schulten is asking NX01 or NCC 1701D. Trevor, what do you think? Um, I absolutely think you should get the. Uh, Ooh. Um, where did the question go? Uh, the NCC 01D, oh. whatever. Oh. oh no. That is the correct answer, but you also butchered it. But good try. Do you even know I what you said? I assume it's some camera stuff, but no. Oh, no, my God. It's a microwave brand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, can I? Uh, okay. I'll answer this truthfully here. I love both. I do. Like, I'm a big, big fan of Annex 01. I, I love it. It's especially the, like, the, the older aesthetic of the Annex 01. You know, the, the push buttons and everything rather than the touch screens of... of uh, uh, the the D the Galaxy class, right? Um, I I don't. What are we I, talking about? <laughs> I, 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 let, I let trailer. <laughs> yeah, in in the back channel, Trevor just types all caps. Are these actually microwaves? Question mark exclamation mark question mark. <laughs> no, Trevor, they're name they're different ships in Star Trek. So oh, I, I I'm with Chris. I'm with Chris B. I love the Sovereign class. We're, we're gonna, we're just gonna do this. I love the Sovereign class. It's probably my favorite, but it's really, really hard to beat the original Matt Jeffries design of the original series Constitution class. It's really hard to beat that. Like, I, I love so many different Star Trek ships. I, it's hard to have a single favorite. It really is. Like John Eves made a really a lot of good ones. Matt Jeffries did. Um, it, it really is the hard to have a favorite. If you're gonna make me pick one, um, uh, maybe make me pick a favorite Enterprise. I'd have to say Sovereign, just a li just slightly beating out TOS, slightly, but not much. All right, there you go. Good answer, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, I I am I love Star Trek, but I'm also not super. Like I haven't seen it all. I haven't seen all the movies or anything. Uh, just the ones that I sort of like are the ones I pay attention to. Which is the Enterprise from Next Generation? Is that the the D, the seventeen oh one D or whatever? It's the D, yeah. The the Galaxy Club. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the one. That's the yeah. that's the one for me. You know, we had a remodel last year and we got a microwave drawer. And since we're talking about microwaves, microwave drawers are so amazing. Highly recommend. What it's a, it's a drawer that you can yeah. microwave stuff in? Yeah, so instead of having it like on top of your counter, it's like under your counter and then it like rolls out and then you just put stuff in it and then it rolls back in and microwaves and it's it's so good. Wow. Um okay. I didn't know that was a thing. Also, nobody is talking about microwaves but you, just for the record. <laughs> I am going to talk about microwaves since I got trolled not once but twice. <laughs> Jack, I, I just gotta say, you did it. And that was that was amazing, Tr truly amazing. You just trolled Trevor on for that long. That that I kind of helped along with it too. I, I literally, I purposely was being vague, and it. Oh my god, it paid off. So good. We love you, Trevor. Never change, but also. Get you know culture. what annoys me? about microwaves uh -oh. on the we, EM spectrum we... of course they, oh, you would think that the since it's microwave you would think oh the wavelength must be micrometer but no it's nowhere close to being a microwave it's like a centimeter is the wavelength who thought of this naming scheme microwaves should be called centiwaves there's my rant 
you know what? I don't disagree. <laughs> Let's watch some replays. We've got replays queued up without audio. We're working on some with audio, but let's uh, take a quick look at the old replays. Here is a shot from. Ooh, what is. Where is this? Is this River? Like this looks like River. Yeah. yeah. All right. This will be cool because we'll be able to see the cloud really well. Just look at all of that dust that's kicked up. I don't think they had time to like sweep the pad because they usually do that. I mean, I know it kicks up a lot of dust and other stuff from you know the ground and everything, but usually they like go through and sweep the pad. I don't know if they really had time to do that a lot this time around because they were kind of working right up to the end. So, yeah. Well, they they did they did sweep the pad in about seven to ten seconds with a whole lot of force. That's true. Just, just not before that. Uh, do, you, is there anything we can glean from the uh, the colors in the cloud? It looks like it starts off lighter. Maybe that's just the steam from the from the engines hitting the. Look at that! Oh my gosh, beautiful. Sorry, bird. I think that was like about eight seconds, eight to nine seconds. I counted that right. <laughs> Nice. Luckily, yeah. this particular camera is uh, like a mile north of the pad. So the birds that you're seeing fly by, thank you. Thanks to uh, foreshortening and, and, and compression from the telephoto lens. Hopefully those birds are not actually uh, anywhere close. Here's another angle. This is also from uh, our North Beach cameras. I will never get tired of seeing the frost on the booster light up from the, the light from the Raptors. It's just beautiful. I, I just can't wait for a nighttime launch or even static fire of a booster. Like, I can't wait. It's going to be so cool. Indeed. And you can just see the huge amount of dust and material kicked up there. Pray for all of our cameras. <laughs> when we, well, oh, here we go. This is from uh, our, our uh, CP11 camera that I deployed this morning at who knows o'clock. One, two, gorgeous. Three, and yeah, six, seven seconds maybe. It's really yeah, hard to tell with all the cloud in the way. It's hard to yeah, tell this, when it starts and shuts off. This might not be the best angle to to do the uh, the count with, but I, valiant effort, sir. <laughs> all right, and here's from our Dune camera. This one, I suspect, will get a little bit roasted with some debris, so let's keep an eye out for that. There's the water deluge. Beautiful. RIP fence. Wow, the wind really blowing that cloud to the right of this camera frame. Neat. And like it almost reached the camera, but then was blown away. <laughs> Interesting. So that must be why trailer got so thoroughly roasted. <laughs> All right, here's highway. And, you know, we, we thank people for their support a lot on our streams as I think we should because we could not do what we do without all that support but as we run through these replays <laughs> the sheer number of camera angles um, I mean I think that says it all like a huge amount of work from so many people on the team goes into not just setting all this stuff up not just maintaining it all in the field but also running it in the background I mean 
all of the SBL ops, Kevin, Das, it just it takes a village. It takes a lot of effort to get this depth and breadth of angles set up around Starbase. It's taken years, frankly. So that is why we're so thankful for all the support, because we love what we do, and we get to do this because y'all are coming out and voting with your dollars and or just eyeballs you know again doesn't have to be a monetary thing it's just neat it's just neat i was looking at some old photos uh yesterday and i i found a photo from early 2021 of me streaming a ship getting lifted onto pad b i think it was ship 11 and <laughs> suffice to say our streaming infrastructure back then um was a shadow of what it is today like i had stuff just sort of clipped haphazardly with the tripod i mean hey it worked but uh yeah the the level to which we are able to operate at this point is is really awesome and and makes me so happy look at all these cool replays that one that last one was from the margaritaville south padre this one is from south beach one of my personal favorite angles I love There's the detonation angles. suppression. Yeah, me too. It makes me happy. Mm -hmm. There's water. Gorgeous. SpaceX just tweeted about Bandwagon 1, and I saw the, the tweet notification come through, and then it was SpaceX. I got so excited. <laughs> but, but no. <clears throat> This is just a, another reminder, though, as I think we're going to get very used to saying this year at just the ridiculous pace of, of what we're looking at, right? Just this morning, there was a Starlink launch. Now SpaceX did a full 33, or what we think is a, probably a 33-engine static fire booster 11. We can't confirm the number of engines, unfortunately. And then tonight, they have another Starlink launch with some more direct cell satellites. And then on um, Sunday, as SpaceX just tweeted, they have their first bandwagon mission. So those are those rideshare uh, missions that are going to lower inclination. So it, it is just remarkable that this much is going on in the space industry right now. And yeah, definitely looks like about a seven second duration firing um nice yeah about seven so it just it makes me so happy that we that there's so much going on with space flight these days not just with spacex but with a variety of companies doing cool things and of course especially with spacex because you know spacex gonna spacex so it's just it's good to see it gives you some hope it gives you some excitement that in the coming months and years, we will see some really cool stuff happen. Humans return to the moon, not just for flags and footprints, but for to stay. And then eventually humans also heading off to Mars. Look at that shot. That is just gorgeous. Wow. And the clouds wrapping around the, the long right. side after the static. <laughs> right. The blue yeah, sky, really the shadow from the clouds and the light playing on the cylinder of the boot, like just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous day for a static fire. I still think like one of the coolest days and it, and it also is because it was like the first time, first like really, really, really big test for SpaceX. I'm not saying that the smaller hops weren't, but the deep dark blue sky where it was like 4 4 p.m. or something like that i can't remember the exact time but it was like late afternoon when sn8 took off the it, not a cloud in the sky was one of the coolest things i've ever seen especially yeah. one of the coolest launches of this program even yeah, that, with the full stack flights the evening lighting of that particular launch it was like right at golden hour it was perfect it's really hilarious. All the water that's hitting this particular camera, this is one of the trailer cameras. I will not call it what Kevin called it in the back channel. You can't be, you can't be typing stuff like that, Kevin. Not while we're live. But yeah, that's similar to what we see with uh, um, 
the uh, shuttle main engine tests over at, at Stennis. You know, it's basically a giant rainmaker, right? Yeah, I think it just blew a bunch of that. Uh, uh, the water, the water deluge just kind of blew over the tank farm, and then the engine just kind of shot it even a little bit farther. So yeah, just kind of covered it in rain. Here's another angle, also from Danger Cart, aka the trailer. Oh, that's beautiful. You can really see how the berm deflects the force of the engines up and over the tank farm there. Does its job. Yeah, it does a job. And when the smoke cleared, the booster was still there. Fantastic. It, it, it's always kind of ridiculous when you go through all the replays. It's like, how many cameras do we have again? It's like, <laughs> seeing... Uh... All right, the last three replays we have, we're going to have audio with. We're going to take those full screen. Normally, we like to keep the live view there just in case anything goes on. But it looks like the booster is detanking. Frost is lowering. So uh, let's let's listen to some of these replays with sound. Sounds good to me. Trevor, it sounded good to you. It's lots of raptors. How could it not sound good? <laughs> That's true. Music to my ears. So I have a question. How does the duration of this compare to previous booster static fires? I think it's about the same. I think we might have seen booster 10 do a, a little bit longer. We probably saw booster 9 do a little bit shorter if memory serves. I think, but uh, I think nine was around like five seconds, give or take, four or five seconds. I think ten did. It was like nine, nine seconds, give or take, if I remember correctly. And then this one, of course, around seven, maybe eight. So, I mean, it's it's a little bit different, but it serves the same purpose. They're testing all the engines, and I, I, again. This is a later booster, so they may be able to start these things up a little bit differently, or it's hard to know exactly what they're doing with the engine startup sequence or anything along those lines, so, you know. Doug W. raises an interesting question in chat, and I don't want to talk over this, so I'm going to say that out loud, and then we'll hit it after we hear the static fire. There's the detonation suppression system. There's the water. Nice. I so think it's Doug worth reiterating God. that this pad just launched flight three about what three weeks ago. ago yeah 22 days ago and they have already conducted now a static fire on it so starship you know we've always talked about how the pace is going to start picking up and the pace is just going from months to weeks to eventually days and then hours so it's what an exciting time to be alive I couldn't have said it better myself, Trevor. Thank you for that. I I agree. This really is exciting. And the, the foreshortening of the time between these events, if that's even the right word, um, is remarkable. There's detonation suppression. And water. Hmm. 
Never gets old. Yeah, it seems like seems like seven to eight seconds, I would say. The more I'm hearing it. So Yeah. Alright, so from chat, what do we call thirty three raptors? You know, like a a group of crows is called a murder of crows. A group of dolphins is called a pod of dolphins. What do we? What is the name for a group of raptors? A a gaggle. Hmm. A quick Google says a group of raptors has several names depending on which type of raptor we're describing. A group of owls is a parliament. Eagles a convocation, and a wake is a name for a group of buzzards. I kind of like parliament. A parliament yeah, like of parliament. raptors. A parliament of. Ra- Sounds weird, though. Maybe it's just me. And chat is chat has many suggestions. A boost of raptors, a clutch, a grackle of raptors, <laughs> a roundup of raptors, a storm of raptors. Dan, I'm not going to read yours because you didn't eat a taco this morning. Um, a Gary of raptors. <laughs> I like a parliament of raptors, partially because I imagine the like British parliaments of like, oh, duh, <laughs> when they're all igniting. I don't know. What was that? Can you can you do that again? No. <laughs> that was not a British accent. I, I no, suck I, at accents. I don't know what that was. Yeah, it was amazing, is what it was. <laughs> 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 Good deal. <laughs> Chris B, Trevor's both accurate and fired. <laughs> <laughs> fired on stream, oof. A murder of raptors, a colony of raptors, a Jurassic of raptors, mm. a burrito of raptors, a roar of raptors, a buyer of raptors. <laughs> Stop it. An order of raptors, I like that. Hmm. A roost. Still, I'm still stuck on Trevor's impression of British <laughs> Parliament. <laughs> got, got Das in the back channel, a diamond of raptors. Ooh, I like that. That's a good like, one. I like that one. Yeah, leave it up to Das to come up with the right name, right? Right. A magnitude of raptors. A downfall of raptors. I lo- Chat, you guys get some, a plethora of raptors. How about a buttload Could- of raptors? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> Kevin says, in honor of the chopsticks, a hug of raptors. I, I mean, sure. Why not? <laughs> what is that? Okay. Uh, how did how did Ryan do this so quickly? Can we get can we show the, Can we please show this on stream, please, Kevin? Oh my god. This is amazing. <laughs> no no spoilers. No spoilers. Chat will just have to wait and see what we're talking about. Ryan, oh. how did you do that so fast? So What's even better about this is they're not all the same. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. That is a parliament of raptors. (laughs) I'm still, I I need to know, Ryan, how? It's also, I love the watermark just left <laughs> on. <them. laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, it's amazing. Good, good deal. So to recap, we don't know exactly uh, the status of the static fire. It certainly appeared to be 33 engines. It certainly appeared to be uh, standard duration. And so the next thing would be to wait for SpaceX to tweet something with more information in terms of what exactly this test uh was and um you know what level of success they were able to achieve with it but yeah by all accounts 
a, a wildly textbook and smooth static fire of Booster 11 today. That makes me happy. Yeah. Another step towards Flight 4. Uh, all that could be left is either a wet dress or no wet dress, you know? This could be like the... This could be the last test before the flight. You don't know. Um, yeah, that's really wild to think about. And, you know, like we were talking about earlier, there could have been issues with the static fire of either this booster or Ship 29, and we could see them static fire again. But all things nominal, this could potentially be the last test of the individual vehicles before flight. Um, and even the last test of the entire setup before flight if they don't do a, a full wet dress with the entire stack so really remarkable that just weeks after flight 3 we have this happening and also ship 29 static fires happening it's just the exact kind of cadence we want to see from this program absolutely excellent just keep on going and going and going is all they do no stop. No break. Mary is reporting that static fire sounded really good. Excellent. Hopefully we get some cool photos and videos from her as well in the coming minutes and hours. We're also going to have a rapid turnaround video of all the different angles up on YouTube, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, Josh, thank you for the support. They say eating tamales and watching a static fire. Now, you're supposed to eat um, a, a cold treat like ice cream on Static Fire Day. You're supposed to eat tamales or something spicy on a cryo-proof day. Get it right. But also, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, thank you for the support. Andy Builds, thanks for becoming a Pad Rat member. Uh, if it if the software will cooperate here, Jeffrey, thank you for becoming a Pad Rat member. Um, I might need to let this, I might need to let the software chill out for a minute. Um, well, that was amazing. Yeah. Yay. Backfire. Nate Saunders gifting five red team memberships. Thank you. Uh, nuclear fallout. Thanks for the support. They say Musk is watching the stream. And when Alex says go, <laughs> Alex is uncannily good. At, uh, at the predictions, as we have discussed. Nuclear Fallout. Nope, I already did that one. Timothy, thank you for upgrading to Red Team. Steven, thank you for grabbing a metal print. They say start of my NSF print wall. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Steven. It's very kind of you. Simon, thank you for the support and the store purchase there. They say, is the Flight 3 patch out of stock? and or coming back if so. Uh, hey, store team. Is the Flight 3 patch out of stock? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Flight 3 is out of stock and never coming back was limited. Um, we still have Flight 1. I'm not part of the store team, but I heard Adrian saying this yesterday, so I feel confident about it. We still have Flight 1 and 2. I believe Flight 1 is starting to run out, so I would get, uh, if you're interested wow. in those, get those um, soon. And then, of course, uh, we will have Flight 4 stuff, but I can't say anything about that. So, here's here's something kind of ri ridiculous already here. Is uh, SpaceX has already put out a road delay for a one-hour transport <laughs> on uh, April... April 7th from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. So that's good indication that today's test was probably uh, successful if they're already confident of let's move the sucker back. Um, so all good signs, I'd say. Yeah, I, w I would say that it's good. Let's get it off, get it back to the bay, and get working on the... Uh, um, th there's also a backup for the next day from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., but uh, that's basically get it off yeah get it back to the bay get working on it again finish up the old m work and I, I don't know maybe have a finished uh mishap investigation in a couple weeks fingers crossed fingers crossed yeah 
Brenda, thank you for the store purchase and saying that I'm awesome. I'm not, but I appreciate it anyways. What? What? You are. Awesome, not. Jack. No, no, you are. No, uh, you are. Uh, uh, you, are uh, you don't need to lie to Jack. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I deserve this. <laughs> I. Jeez, Trevor, man. Antonio. Um. Antonio's mad at Trevor because of the Star Trek thing, and I accidentally. Oh. It it showed up and then went away. Uh, sorry, I'm having some iPad difficulties here. Uh, Anonymous, thank you for the store purchase. They say, great merch, guys. Good stream. Great flames on Booster 11 Static Fire. Keep up the great work. Also, all the gifters in the community. Awesome. Thank you, Anonymous. Oh, they got my uh, Flight 2 print. Amazing. Thank you for that. Um, Roseanne DeVasto. Hey, Roseanne. Another one of those names we see pop up all the time. Asking 33 engines? Question mark? We think so. And especially with that road delay just posted. It seems like SpaceX is already confident that they're going to, uh, to move Booster back to the launch site or to the production site. This is, this is a little bit insane. I'm just going to say this straight up. Like, this is a bit insane. SpaceX rolled this thing out on the night of the third okay they then lifted it that early morning they then prepped the pad over the course of the next day static fired today and then they're going to take it off in like two days like what that you know i mean they're just they are executing in a fantastic fashion and they're doing what they said that they would do, and they're doing what they need to do to fulfill their obligation to NASA and the Artemis program, and to get, you know, more Starlinks into orbit, and to get this entire Starship system up and running in spectacular fashion. And it's just so nice to see. It's like watching, I've said this before on stream, it's like, I'm not a sports person, but it, it's like watching a, a baseball player just like hit home runs over and over again, or a basketball player just like dunking over and over again. It's just, they're really firing on all combustion chambers. And it, it's just, it's astounding. It's truly astounding. Like, I mean, for reference, like, Booster 10, they rolled it out to the launch site on December, but when it went to do its initial static fire, they rolled it out on the 18th of December, and then they rolled it back on the 2nd of January. So, I mean, that was pretty quick, but you have to remember, around that time, they did have an abort in one of their, in their static fire attempt, and then they also had a, um... They also had Christmas and New Year's around that time, so that was even extended. Like, SpaceX is getting very efficient with getting these vehicles ready, getting them out, getting the testing done, and then getting them back into the barn quick so that they can not only work on the pad, but work on the vehicles in a more secure, closed, and better environment. Because I think we all remember when Booster 9 rolled out to the launch site in... On, it rolled out on August 7th. No, it, ro it rolled out on August 22nd, I mean. And then it was put on the OLM, and it didn't leave the OLM until the 18th of November when it flew. Like, I don't... I think that's the longest the booster's ever going to sit on the OLM, and that's not going to get beaten. Uh, for At least for any one period of time. So it's kind of... It's kind of ridiculous how quickly SpaceX is getting to testing and turning these vehicles around i mean let's also not forget where they were a year ago they hadn't launched a single full stack yet and that full stack that ultimately lifted off what about 50 weeks ago uh all things considered didn't go very well mm -hmm. um, lost so many engines and you know they took them several launch attempts to finally get it off the pad and uh had a lot of work to do after that so you know, it's this, as Jack always likes to say, you know, we, we keep thinking the SpaceX steamroller is already going as fast as it's going to go. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you are, there's no sign of that um, stopping. Indeed. We love to see it. We love to see it. Steve, thank you for the support. They say, Trevor, there's 
help for you to deal with Jack, call 1-800-NSF-CARES. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt Dahl, thank you. What, also, what's up, Matt? They say nine ninety nine for Star Guy and team. Thanks for the coverage, fans. Friends. Thank you, Matt. John Depker, thanks for the support. Again, they say always love spending time listening to y'all. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. You keep supporting. We'll keep showing up. John Depker, also gifting one red team membership. Austin Skirvin, with a $5 tip. Thank you, Austin. They say a shuttle of raptors. Okay, I like that. I know I'm biased, but I like that. Mm. And I'm not just trying to make Chris B happy. If I was trying to make Chris B happy, I would say a horse of raptors, which makes no sense, but it would make him happy. JS Webb is saying, can we please have a repeat of Trevor's comment? This was seven minutes ago. I have no idea what Trevor comment they're asking I'm about. I am assuming they're talking about my uh, impression of the British Parliament. <laughs> yeah, that was fantastic. You should do improv. I, I would should. I would I would absolutely watch a Trevor one man show improv type deal. I think it would be so awful that it would be funny. Yes, like you should do some crowd work. Oh my god, it'd be amazing. <laughs> it would be it would be so bad. It would be like a train wreck that you can't look away from. It's so bad, it's amazing, kind of. Yeah, right. One of those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tyler Ross Ekins Holland, person with many names. Thank you for becoming a Pad Rat member. And Joseph F. Thank you for the support. They say a roost of raptors. So much support on this stream. Just once again, thank you to everybody for gifting the memberships, for doing the super chats, for everything, for buying the merch. We appreciate what you do because we can't do what we do without you. And just once again, have to reiterate that you do not need to support us monetarily. We appreciate the people that do, and we appreciate the people that can't or don't or don't want to just the same because, you know, hitting the like button, telling your friends about us, coming out, watching the streams, talking in the chat, all that stuff. We appreciate it so much because we get a lot, at least I personally get a lot of motivation and a lot of satisfaction from everybody's kind words and everybody being as excited about this stuff as we are. It really makes me happy for the same reason that when people come up around Starbase and, and, and you know, say kind words or just say, hey, are you Jack? We love the, we love the NSF streams. Y'all, everyone at NSF does great work. Hey one, hey two, hey three. Can you hear me? Maybe. I I am not okay. muted. Oh, uh, yay, we're back. Excellent. So yeah, Kanan is asking, when do we think they'll forego static fires for flight tests? I think for all the flight tests, until the system becomes operational, we will see static fires. Maybe even into operational territory similar to the flow that we saw with Falcon 9. Trevor, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't that long ago that SpaceX stopped doing static fires on Falcon 9. And even then, right, it's there are still many missions where they do conduct static fires. So for any big NASA launch and for any of the big um, Department of Defense launches or whatnot, they're still conducting these static fires. And every new booster is still getting static fired at McGregor. Um, so I think it's this is just really the SpaceX way where they want to test everything. They want to get as much data on these vehicles as possible. And, you know, maybe in 
50 years, if this really is like airliner like uh, reliability, they'll start, you know, there won't be quite as much testing, but I, I have a hard time seeing them want to get rid of these static fires. Um, the question then may be at what point do they decide that once they've uh, if it's a flight proven boost they can get rid of a static fire and I'd imagine that'll be fairly similar to Falcon where once they get familiar with it um, and once the booster has a launch under its belt if they didn't do any major refurbishment to it then they'll uh, forgo the static fire but that's a ways out this is a very very new program when compared to Falcon you know I'm gonna make Ethereal Swordsman happy uh, if a booster has a belt to get a static fire under, as you say, Trevor, would the belt be like the stringers around the common dome section? No, the belt is the um, hot staging ring. What? Well, I guess. I guess that makes sense. All right, I'll allow it. <laughs> Dave Early is asking Has there been any sort of projected date set for Flight 4? Or is it all just speculation at the moment? Beyond Elon tweeting flight next month, which would be May, um, I have not heard of any dates set, so everything would be speculation, but certainly a flight in May at this point, especially with today's successful static fire of Booster 11, at least apparently successful. Uh, we don't have confirmation of that yet. A flight in May seems like almost a certainty. BTB is saying, whoa, I have just joined. Has there been some upgrades with the cameras as it looks amazing? Always doing some work to uh, bring you guys better views. I deployed three, technically four cameras this morning in service of trying to get the best views we could for this event. So yeah, always trying to up our game. And uh, all the folks in the back channel and all the folks running the cameras and operating everything definitely are trying to get the most out of the cameras that we do have in addition to the assets that we deploy for tests like this so it takes a team elites official on twitch thank you for the support they say no just a question they say once they attempt to catch if the super heavy booster misses the chopsticks chances of gse launch mount or tank farm survival i mean i mean the boosters the booster's mostly empty at that point, but it's also fairly massive, like it just weighs a lot. So, yeah. I mean, I think I think the infrastructure would survive. There would definitely be, need to be some repairs made, but I don't think it would be like an end-of-the-world catastrophe kind of thing. It, it also depends on how much it misses it, too. Yeah, good point. Yeah, like if it misses it by a decent amount and hits straight into the tank farm, well rip um yeah that, that's that's always the thing luckily though ho or hopefully the newer uh newer launch pad will have a slightly different design where the uh tank farm isn't that close or if it is it's behind the tower where it won't wouldn't be hit by a booster coming in or something right uh ryan do you feel strongly about the current orbital tank farm in any way uh, it, here's the thing for a while there jack you know, it didn't work. It, it just didn't. Like we, we knew that. I, I always said it for a while. It wasn't it wasn't gonna work. I mean, I kind of said that knowingly that eventually they would figure it out because they have. They obviously figured it out now. I mean, they're able to load. They're able to prop load in like 53 minutes, which is sheer insanity. Um, that's that's a yeah. That's. That's kind of insane. So it works now. They they worked out the kinks. Um, yeah, I, I hope the next ones are even better because they know how to build it now. Right. And uh, Shannon, thank you for the store purchases. They say watching you now with my nerd, with MacGyver. Super stoked for next flight test. They're guessing it's going to be on four twenty. That might be a little bit early, but uh, yeah. Either way, thank you for the store purchases there, and we're we're glad. We're glad you like to watch with your nerd. And who and MacGyver? Are you watching MacGyver at the same time? 
I mean, not a bad call. Richard Dean Anderson? I mean, it's Yeah, can't go wrong. Yeah, can't, can't go wrong. No. And Chris W. saying it better launch before our UK meetup on the 24th of May. That's right, there is an NSF meetup in the UK on the 24th of May. I believe it is at the Leicester Space Center, um, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Leicester? I'll be there. Leicester? Yep. Really? Yeah, yeah I'll be You're there. You're trolling. No, no, I'll be there because it's the start of a, a fun trip um, I'm taking with my dad. Are going to uh, we're, I'm gonna go see Normandy, you know, because it's the 80th anniversary of D-Day oh, wow. this year. Yeah, so I, oh, I can't wow. wait for that. Yeah, I did that. Uh, oh man, was it five years ago now? Yeah, I think I was there for the 75th. I went and saw Normandy and, and went to various beaches and whatnot, and it's it's quite an experience. So yeah. enjoy that, and to all of our members that will be there for the UK meetup, including our our you know NSFers like LSR and the Burgenator, and uh, you know who knows maybe other folks like Alex and Adrian and Ryan and you know go to the go to the UK meetup if you can go to the UK meetup go to the UK meetup it's going to be a good time anyways i think with that as we are just 29 minutes away from NSF live we will wrap things up ryan thank you for being on the stream and sharing your knowledge and wisdom and trolling trevor with me oh it's my pleasure as always jack it's it's so easy to do it with trevor like it 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 really is one of the easiest things to troll him it's so much fun can't wait to do it again it is it is. Also, Trevor, thank you, I guess, or whatever, for being here. It's okay that you were here. I'm not really floored about it. I'm not really mad about it, but, you know, it's whatever. Yeah, I mean, we got some good microwave talk in. I think that's what really matters. <laughs> the real friends with the microwave talk we had along the... I don't know. What? Um, also, thank... Yeah, I don't know. Deal with it. Also, thank you to Gage, Jay, and the SBL Ops for operating cameras in the background. We appreciate you guys so much. Also, thank you to the Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. There's Kevin's info there on the top right. Uh, make sure you follow all of us on all of the socials, or at least NASA Spaceflight Actual. Um, we're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on... I think we're even on TikTok. Jeez. Uh, of course, Facebook. So yeah, be sure to follow NSF on all the socials so you can stay up to date with every little bit of information as it comes out. And yeah, with that, I think we'll send you guys to today's NASA Spaceflight live stream, which starts in like 28 minutes. So holy cow, um, I need to walk my dog and get ready for that. Um, but we will analyze the static fire footage in, in detail on, uh, the, on NSF live in just about 27 minutes so we'll, we'll throw you over there hang out in chat and uh, if you remember I do believe we will do a pre-show and post show today as we have started doing so if you are a member uh, hop into the member discord and uh, well I guess a Capcom member and above then uh, yeah then hop into the uh, the pre-show and listen to us panic about getting everything set up I'm kidding we don't panic we're very professional everything's professional we're very professional. All right. I think I think that's all the things. Good job, Booster 11. And we'll see you all nerds in like 20 minutes for NASA Space Flight Live. Bye. And here we go. Chamber pressure looks good. Following up. Water tower is flying! Yes! Eagle down phenomenal. Flying down high, it's off. Playing it, off. Oh. It's orange! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Decollage! Oh my god! Put that in the big bag, you know? 343 unfolds to go. Indeed. We rise together, back to the moon and beyond. This is meant to be igniting the flare, correct? Right?